Rico, in the Northeast Caribbean Sea, is home to over 3 million people, with an additional 1,500 people living on the nearby Virgin Islands. In the first three weeks of January 2020, Puerto Rico was rattled by almost 500 earthquakes greater than magnitude 3. Before addressing that sequence, let's look at the broader tectonic setting in earthquake history. The Caribbean plate moves east at about 2 centimeters per year with respect to the North American plate. The convergent plate boundary is curved, so that oceanic lithosphere of the North American plate enters the Puerto Rico trench at an oblique angle. North of Hispaniola, oblique collision of the Bahama platform produces additional trench parallel forces. The result is a zone of distributed deformation within the Caribbean plate broken into microplates, including the Puerto Rico Virgin Islands microplate between the Lesser Antilles and Hispaniola. Examining over 1,800 recent earthquakes with magnitudes greater than four shows the depth of the deepest earthquakes increasing with distance from the Puerto Rico Trench. This map of depth to the subducting plate shows the oceanic lithosphere has reached about 100 kilometers depth beneath northern Puerto Rico, which lies over 160 kilometers from the trench. The distance from the trench to Puerto Rico and the depth to the subducting plate beneath it both contribute to seismic waves losing amplitude and thus shaking potential as they travel from the megathrust to Puerto Rico. The most recent megathrust earthquake occurred beneath Mona Canyon in 1943 with a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake. The rupture started at 35 kilometers depth and moved upward toward the trench, but stopped at 25 kilometers depth, so no tsunami was produced. Ground shaking in northwest Puerto Rico was strong, but damage was minimal. This is the largest well-documented earthquake on this sector of the subduction zone plate boundary in the 500-year written record. It would be foolish, however, to assume it is the largest earthquake possible, as great magnitude 8 and 9 subduction zone earthquakes often have recurrence intervals of over a thousand years. Returning to the cross-section, we see the capping layers of the limestone carbonate platform of Puerto Rico dip towards the trench. Let's go back 3 million years, when this shallow marine coral growth was originally flat, to examine the evolution of the subduction zone. At around this time, subduction became steeper, and the depth of the trench increased to become the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean. These changes in geometry may have decreased friction on the plate boundary, so that great magnitude 8 or 9 megathrust earthquakes could be less likely. However, this northward tilt makes the slope vulnerable to submarine landslides, and two large amphitheater-shaped features are probably sites of immense prehistoric landslides. If the largest of these failed in a single landslide event, the resulting tsunami could have had run-ups approaching 16 meters along the north coast of Puerto Rico. Indeed, submarine landslides are an important tsunami hazard throughout the Greater and Lesser Antilles. Let's now examine the tectonic boundaries of the Puerto Rico Virgin Islands microplate. When we hold the Caribbean plate fixed, we observe a small component of North American plate motion perpendicular to the trench, and a larger component parallel to the trench. As shown by the earthquake history and modern GPS observations, this oblique subduction drives separation of the Puerto Rico Virgin Islands microplate from the Lesser Antilles to the southeast and from Hispaniola to the west. An example earthquake between the Virgin Islands and Lesser Antilles occurred in 1867. Six meters of combined normal and left lateral strike slip displacement produced a fault scarp on the north wall of the Virgin Islands basin during this earthquake with approximate magnitude of 7.2. Uplift of the ocean floor generated a tsunami with run-ups of 7.6 meters at Frederickstead on St. Croix and 6 meters at Charlotte Amelie on St. Thomas. At least 23 and perhaps as many as 50 fatalities occurred in the Virgin Islands. The 1785 and 1867 earthquakes document rifting of the Puerto Rico Virgin Islands microplate from the Lesser Antilles through the Anagata Passage. On October 11, 1918, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake with 3 meters of normal fault displacement occurred in Mona Passage. Severe ground shaking on the west coast of Puerto Rico caused an estimated 76 fatalities. Five minutes after the earthquake, the sea receded from the shore at Punta Borican and Punto Higuero, then returned two minutes later in a wave that reached over 6 meters run-up. Over the next 40 minutes, the tsunami swept down the west coast causing about 40 drownings. Bathymetry reveals a scarp 
caused by a submarine landslide nine kilometers across and 150 meters thick at the south end of Mona Canyon. Although tsunami modeling demonstrates this landslide could have caused the 1918 tsunami, close visual observations by submersibles suggest it could be much older. The rifting in Mona Passage that resulted in the 1918 earthquake and continued extension of Mona Canyon is produced by oblique collision of the Bahama platform with northern Hispaniola, which causes Hispaniola to be pulled away from the Puerto Rico Virgin Islands microplate. A sequence of moderate to strong normal and strike-slip faulting earthquakes started in late December 2019 offshore of southwestern Puerto Rico. Although it is a zone of distributed deformation and only roughly located, recent GPS observations suggest that the boundary between the Hispaniola and Puerto Rico Virgin Islands microplate passes through southwest Puerto Rico. The largest of the 2020 earthquakes at magnitude 6.4 occurred on January 7th, south of Guayanilla. Five municipalities from Juanica to Ponce experienced very strong ground shaking with one person killed and eight injured. Damage to infrastructure and buildings, including by permanent flooding due to coastal subsidence, was estimated at 3.1 billion. Many onland faults, like the left lateral Punta Montalva strike slip fault zone, and offshore structures, like the Investigator and Caja de Muertos normal fault zones, are located in this region. Ongoing research through the Puerto Rico Seismic Network and offshore submarine geophysical surveys will clarify the faults responsible for the 2020 earthquake sequence. Plate boundary subduction zone earthquakes are important hazards for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. However, as demonstrated recently, shallow earthquakes on the microplate boundaries also present important earthquake and tsunami hazards.